Welcome back to another edition of Star Power. It's me, Matt Kristoff, and I'm chilling up in the trees, man. I love nature. Hope you do too. But without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you today's show, event promoter, Jonathan Ramos. Check it out. So can you give us a little rundown in terms of what REMD entails? Uh, it's twofold. It's a, it's a concert company that uh, I started back in 1993, and uh, we've been basically growing ever since. And we do uh, live music concerts, uh, mostly in Toronto, across the country, but most of them are the bulk of them are in Toronto. We pretty well do a little bit of everything, do rock stuff, indie, you know, dance stuff, you know, anything really. Um, so that's one half of the company. The second half of the company does, uh, specializes in, uh, in sponsorship and marketing programs for brands. All right, so that, I'm sorry, I should say that for brands that revolve around uh, a youth demographic and music, especially live music. All right, so it's kind of the one ties in with the other. The first show we ever did was with Farside, uh, but uh, since then, mm, uh, The Roots, numerous times, Outkast, D'Angelo, Tribe Called Quest, uh, The Fuji, both Lauren Hill, Fuji's, Eminem, uh, Robin Thicke, Alicia Keys. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Not really, I mean, I never really, I, I just, I'm the sort of person that doesn't really, um, I, there's not a lot of, sort of forethought put into something like you know I, there's it was never planned like you know through high school I you know there's always been music in one form or another music has always played a role in my life um, you know so in, in you know in the simplest form um, myself and brother and my friends were DJs in high school right, in Brandon so that was kind of the role that played there um, didn't really do much around music once I got out of school um, everybody kind of went their separate ways you know did the, did the university thing um, all different schools, so uh, for a while I was kind of not involved in music, but at the time there was nothing suitable that I could kind of sort of parachute into. Right? So if somebody had offered me a job at a label, I may have taken that. Right? But at this time, that the situation just so happened, it would just so happen that the uh, that the the climate in the city was perfect for you know a, a promoter at the time right, to start. Nobody was consistently doing shows, there was a demand for it, the music was starting to grow beyond just, you know, like a sort of an underground thing as far as hip hop. And I just kind of saw an opportunity and kind of started chasing it. So yeah, there was no, to answer your question, no, there wasn't a grand plan to be sort of an entrepreneur, but that's kind of where I found my, you know, my, my niche, my sort of comfort zone, if you will. So now if you were to like, you know, use four words to summarize your journey. Uh, to date in regards mm -hmm. to your success, it, you know, what words would you incorporate within that? Um, definitely hard work, um, perseverance, because you know, that is an entrepreneur without the perseverance, you just, you don't get anywhere. You only get as much as you put in. You can't rely on other people to kind of, you know, take on the, take up the slack. Uh, and that's exactly what it is, right? So perseverance, you know, hard work. Luck, luck has a lot, you know, has a little bit to do with it. In some ways, you create your own luck, but that that definitely helps. Um, and then the last thing, I guess, honesty, all right. So honesty in how you do business, honest, honesty with your your coworkers, with your partners, and then the biggest thing is honesty with yourself, all right. And sort of being true to what you want to do and honest with what you can and what you can't do, all right. And I think those things would. You know, I'm sure there's more words, but if, if like, you know, if I were to say four, those probably would be it. Okay, so were there any people that were instrumental or, you know, leaders that you looked up in terms of you're helping you evolve into the Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And especially when, if you're an entrepreneur, I mean, in any case, forget about being an entrepreneur. If you're anybody, um, everybody relies on, no matter if you are, you know, you're, you know, working in a ship at a warehouse or you're, you know, the foreman or your president or your head of sales, whatever. Everybody relies on somebody to get where they are. In some cases, it's family. In some cases, it's coworkers. In some cases, it's mentors. For me, you know, there's been countless of people, countless people along the way. Like I mean, I'm the very first one. Uh, a friend of mine, who uh, Errol Nazareth, who was a writer um, with the Toronto Sun, who is still a writer with the Toronto Sun. Him and I shared uh, um, a common love of music. He introduced me to Ron Nelson. Right. So at the time, Ron Nelson was sort of the promoter in the city doing shows and I used to go to a lot of his shows but he was the only one who was doing them consistently and doing them um, well consistently right okay um, 
so I kind of would go and I would see how the show was run before I even realized I wanted to do that. And uh, when Juan decided he wanted to get out of that game, that's kind of when I decided, okay, you know what, if he gets out, there's like a hole in the market. So, you know, and, and Ron did actually give me some advice when I started out, right? He was, he was really, he was great about that, right? He didn't have to do it, um, but he, you know, he talked me through some stuff and, and kind of, you know, so I'll always respect him for that. And to this day, you know, he's, I consider him a friend. For our viewers that want to sort of get, you know, a recipe for, you know, that they can take from you, mm -hmm. that they can incorporate in their own success, is there any words of wisdom you can shout on them to lead them? I mean, uh, it, there's, it, it would be different for everybody. It depends on, you know, who you are and what it is you want to do. But it's, it's you know, it's going back to what you, you know, the earlier question. It's, it's being honest with yourself and what you want to accomplish. But also it's doing it for the right reasons. Right? Especially in this business, because it's a very social business. It, it, um, it can be, uh, what do you, what, what are you, it could be glamorous. But that's, you know, the, and, uh, the industry is littered with people that littered with people that get into it for that reason. Find out it's not as glamorous, or it actually takes hard work, and most of the work is unrewarding. And then just you know fall by the wayside or get out of it, right? Or lose a lot of money, mm -hmm. or worse. So um, that's the main thing. It's like if it's if it's a, the music business you're getting into, um, you know, realize you're getting in. You got to do it. You got to grind, right? And you don't make you know you don't make real friends in this business right you make friends but you don't make you know the real friendships are few and far between um and it's there's uh there's a lot more to it in terms of in terms of work than people realize right? and it's a, and it's and and that the other thing is in this industry it's a long-term hustle it's not like a quick thing you might get a quick fix here once in a while but you can't keep that up, all right? So if, you, you know, my advice, I mean, to anybody, if you want to get into it as being an entrepreneur, if you want to get into it, do your research, have something to fall back on, whether it's um, an education, whether it's a day job, whether even it's a part-time job, whether it's savings, all right? I tell everybody, it's like, you know, if you think you can do it, do it. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise, but be smart about it, all right? And do it for the right reasons. So now, if anyone wants to specifically be a promoter mm -hmm. and be in the music industry, is there any specific advice that you would recommend? Um, I mean, again, there's so many, there's so many variables, but uh, it's 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 knowing the music. Right? It comes down to exactly that, like knowing the music. So if you know the music um, and you want to get into it for the right reasons, as opposed to, you know, you. You know, I don't know the, the 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 shallower part of it, which is you know I want to be I want to hang with these people, I want to go to parties, I want to do this, do that, that kind of stuff. You can do it, do it on do it, you can do it on the side or that kind of thing. But if you're going to be serious about it, do it because you love music and you have something that stands out. Either you have a business plan, a business model that's different from everybody else. If you have an artist or you are an artist whose sound is different from somebody else or you have a way of delivering or presenting that music that is different. Right? That's the thing, what is, there's a lot of people out there, like there's no bit, there's no real barriers to entry in the music business, right? especially these days. Anybody can make music, anybody can, you know, and half the time it's not really about the music, it's about the hype. But when you clean everything else, clear everything else away, the music has to stand out. So it's like really, 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 really be honest with yourself about why you want to get into it. A lot of our viewers are going to are the high school demographic. So, mm -hmm. is there any path, like in terms of schooling, in regards to you know uh, different applications that they could follow? I mean, when I started, there wasn't directly. You know, there's business courses and MBAs and things like that. But now, um, luckily, there are a couple of post-secondary um, music business schools. Um, I know. I think Travis, I think they're still around, or the Harris Institute, and they actually have post-secondary um, courses that they teach that deal with different parts of the music industry, right? And you can, and whether you want to be a, you know, a sound engineer, whether you want to be in marketing, whether you want to be a concert promoter, artist management, things like that. So they have those kinds of things. And then there, I know there's there's some schools that offer different different variations of it. There are entrepreneurship programs, right? You can degrees in it, degree programs, um, 
But it's really, it, you know, it's, it's more about sort of understanding the business part of it, right? Because that's what you don't see. Like when you turn on the TV and you see videos and you go to a show and you see the concert, they, that's the part you don't see. And that's the kind of thing I learned the hard way, that if I had that, I would have been a little bit ahead of, in my, in my plan, right, in my timeline. Okay. All right, but you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. At the time, it wasn't apparent to me, so I just kind of kept kind of plodding along and, and you know, kind of hoping for the best. And get a couple pitfalls, and, you know, along the way. But it's again learning, right? Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's not a crime to make a mistake, but it is to repeat it. Right? I wouldn't say it's a crime, but you know, that's that's kind of how you are, right? knowing what not to do is as important as learning what to do. Oh, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Jonathan. Great words of wisdom. Thank you for your time, Jonathan. Tune in next week when we have Darren Webster. You man, Christophe, signing out. Star Power.